Welcome along everyone to the Escapade show number eight. Number eight. We've got Gavin Oates from the Tree of Knowledge, who we've met over just very briefly over the last couple of months. And uh, we're just talking about, we had a, a great Skype session with you a few weeks ago there. So Gavin, thanks for coming down. Thank you so much for asking me. Really excited with all the work that you guys are doing and all the the good stuff you're doing, particularly for young people out there. So, yes. uh, you know, it's an honour to be here. Thank you for having me. No, Brian, Gavin's an online personality, founder, director of Tree of Knowledge, I should say. Director, managing director. Managing director. Yeah, not founder. There's a story That's there. Right. But, uh, That's right. But managing director of Tree of Knowledge. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Why don't we get into this story then? <laughs> so, I, I love mean, how excited you like, I, 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 I was going to say, you know, uh, the work you guys do, I mean, basically it was through a, a one of our mentors that have, have put us yep. together, uh, and he has been telling us about the great work you've been doing, and we, we've actually seen him from afar, and, uh, you know, for us it's like really like, wow, what those guys are doing, it's like, you know, on a smaller <clears> scale what we are doing with, with young people, but obviously ours is more focused around music. Of course. Um but Scott had made that connection. Shout to like, Scott McFarlane. Yes, legend. He will be watching this <laughs> yes. at some point. He will so be. Big shout to Scott. And, um, you know, he was very, very adamant, and, and I'm glad he's put it together. So why don't you, for people who don't know about the Tree of Knowledge and who you are, let's bring them up to speed. Cool. Tree of Knowledge, uh, we are essentially a motivational and engagement training organisation. Uh, we travel all of the UK working with... Um, schools, colleges, unis and businesses. So we started out though purely working in schools. Mm -hmm. um, everything we did was based around this idea of helping young people to help themselves. You know, helping to create these really positive futures for these young people uh, and ultimately do our bit to inspire the world. Mm -hmm. um, and then about eight years ago, um, we had done one or two wee bits and pieces within, we'll call it the corporate, the corporate side of things. Um, and then it was things like head teachers, partners getting in touch and saying, you did this thing for my yeah. husband or wife at this event. Could you come and do it with my team at work? And, you know, all kind of grew arms and legs. So now we work with some of the biggest companies in the world, like Nike, um, General Electric, Canon, um, all, all sorts. But right at the heart of our business is, is education mm -hmm. uh, and going into schools and uh you know, helping to put as many smiles and faces as we possibly can. It sounds a bit corny, but that really is what it's all about. So very, very passionate, very purpose-driven organisation. Um, the team has grown and grown over the last few years quite substantially um, and uh, working in more and more schools all the time. And we love it. Yeah. So I was going to ask, does the, obviously it will, but you have to cater different types of training for the schools to like the corporates, or is it fundamentally just making people feel better about where they're at? Like I think one of the things I love about what we do, it it doesn't it doesn't matter what age you are, it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter which position you're in within your business or your school, mm -hmm. what we do will will apply to that individual because at the end of the day we're all human beings, we've all got emotions, we've all got feelings, yeah. we've mm -hmm. all got brains, we're all amazing and we're all able to learn great things. Um we do have to tailor it to an extent, of course we do. Um, we have um, we have workshops for basically primary school children all the way through to sixth year at high school. Um, you know, and every workshop for each year group is completely different. Moving into the corporate world, a lot of the key themes carry over uh, because again, it's about things like mindset, motivation, leadership, communication. Um, but I think when we first went into the corporate world, corporate world, I was terrified. You know, my background, as I'm sure we'll get to at some point, is in primary school teaching. And the thought of going in and working with a large corporate organisation just seemed really alien mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. um, but it turns out if you, can, if you can engage an audience of teenagers for three or four hours, actually working with adults is... Easier. Yeah. <laughs> we, we found that yeah. as well. It's, uh, yeah. it's not that we prefer... You know, but like when we've got the younger ones in, it's like you've just got to strip everything right back, have it hands on, yeah. you know, just get them enjoying themselves. Yeah. And then like the older <clears> older <throat> ones, if they've got a bit of like kind of an interest in music, it makes our job so much easier. Yeah. But then you get some that are just totally not, you know, that, and you've that's got to try the thing, and that, That's you know? the thing with young people, like, because of, especially the culture in Scotland, it's so, 
you know, to be a bit flamboyant or confident or whatever is not cool mm. or whatever. So everybody's a bit more reserved and really they're actually loving it. Yeah. But they're not really showing it. Whereas with adults, you kind of, you know, you, you've passed yeah. that barrier and you, you're either yeah. into something or you're not. You this know? is it. This is it. Um, so what, what would you say really motivates you in terms of how, how you deliver what you deliver and how do you keep the team motivated? Because obviously, as you're saying, the team has grown. Yeah. For us, it's it's a challence, but you know, it's it, we have great people there. So it's like for you, how do you how do you find your sort of key areas of, of helping motivate the team? I think a huge part of it for us is is our vision as an organisation to inspire the world. It's I know there are people out there who would maybe think that that's it's quite a grand vision to have for your little company and maybe a bit corny, but. I, I can assure you, every single person in our company gets up every day knowing that they get to do their little bit that will go exactly. make a difference, that will help to inspire the world. Um, and I That's think cool. the values that go in line that, with that within our business, you know, we've got five core values that everybody could tell you what they are. Everyone can tell you what they mean. Everyone can tell you how they, how they demonstrate those values in their work. And these are things that we, we do talk about, you know, where, you know, so our values, for example, are learning, innovation, fun, excellence, and passion. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think um, as, as speakers and trainers and facilitators, I mean, you can never know enough. You can never learn enough. So that's part of the motivation. You know, you have to keep it fresh. You have to keep it up to date. And, you know, when you're going in and working uh, with other people, particularly in the schools, they're, they're going to tell you if it's rubbish. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're going to be very honest with you if you're not good enough. Kids, kids you, you, you can't bullshit children. Yeah. You know they will they will tell you if they're not enjoying something or if they know that you're not telling the truth. Mm-hmm. You know I mean anyone can go in and tell stories to their audiences, but if they're not true, they're gonna they're gonna know. So mm-hmm. I think it's just this idea of every day of bettering yourself yeah. in order to make it better for your audience to give them the best possible experience you possibly can. Um, you know I want I want every single workshop that's delivered by anybody in Tree of Knowledge. We want people to be walking out the door. Button. Yeah. You know, we want people feeling three foot taller with great big smiles on their faces. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the best lessons I ever had in life, and you'll have heard this phrase before, was when I trained as a primary school teacher and there was an old teacher said to me, Gavin, it doesn't matter who you work with in life, whatever job you do, most people will never remember everything you tell them, but they will remember exactly how you made them feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just stuck. And I think, I think that is really key for us at Tree of Knowledge. It's about... We want people to feel something, something really positive, um, something that's making a difference. So we have a, an approach that we call our three E's, and it was almost by accident that it just so happened that they all started with E, and it's entertain, enlighten, educate, in that order. I'm absolutely convinced that people would rather be entertained than learn. Whether we agree with that or not, it's not the point. Um, if you can make people laugh, if you can help them to feel something, mm-hmm. And we learn some cool stuff in the process. Um, then it uh, it works. It works. I like that approach to education. We have a similar approach, mm-hmm. whereas we use music and the entertaining aspect of DJing, producing music, recording yep. sounds, recording yep. a car door shutting. You know, the young people are like blown away. But yeah, underneath that, they're learning about sound, they how to engineer sounds, yeah. what reverb means. Yeah. You know, all of these kind of things are underlying, yeah. they're learning and they're associating it with that kind of positive yeah, it's all, kind of feeling, as yeah. you're saying. Yeah, and it's almost like it won't be until they it won't be until they're home maybe right. that night that they realise actually I've learned tons yeah, today. Exactly. But in the moment it was all about having this really positive, fun, exciting mm-hmm. experience. Love it. You know, yeah. that's that's what it's all about. And it's even better when you hear it indirectly from like a parent that their kid goes yeah. home. Yeah. And that's yeah. the first thing they talk about. Yeah. Absolutely. So these guys were in uh, talking to us, whether it's three or knowledge or whether it was escapade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like and they the decks out and had a shot at the decks and you know, they probably learned a good bit as well yeah. that day just because their state's yeah. been changed, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's great. No, it's it is amazing when you hear word of mouth about your own doings. It's huge. You know. We, we were in a primary school and that exact thing happened. Yeah. And uh, it was my cousin, her daughter, primary two, and I didn't recognise her because there was sixty kids in. Okay. But she got back to me that night saying, uh, Eva's absolutely buzzing about her day at school today. And I didn't know it was you guys that were in doing the yeah. DJing and stuff. And I'm yeah. like, that's amazing because 
it's can full circle back yeah. round to me through someone else. It yeah. just shows you that it's good work. Yeah, you make yeah. a difference. Yeah. Stuff. And, yeah. and, yeah. and, yeah. and the thing is, you think if when you were a wee guy, you, you know said what? that, and, 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 that and if that was you, and if that was me, and it's like, wow, they've actually gave me my first shot of that's what Calvin Harris does, or whoever <laughs> it is that they, they love, you know, or, and it's, or of a potential career. Absolutely. Like, that could be the first time, you know, there could be like a, a humongous DJ in that the ranks of the primary school. Yeah, yeah. Or a, or a keynote speaker down yeah. the line. But yeah. if you're responsible for creating that spark in the first place, it's a big thing that drives us, you know. And do you know well. what's funny as well is like one of the things that I was asking them was like, you know, what, what do you just want to do when you're older? And literally 90% of them all want to be YouTubers. Yeah, that's the thing. Now, like, this it, is the course. difference. And it's like, and we were just saying, right, well, listen, that you can make that happen you can yeah. do that you know don't let anyone say that you can't but you you've got to work hard and, and yeah. produce lots of content yeah. and, my, my, and actually do it my son's nine and um he he can tell me all sorts of names of youtubers yeah now his his thing is pokemon mm -hmm. and there are all these youtubers who they sit for hours opening packs of pokemon mm -hmm. and my wee boy sits glued to this stuff and but he can reel the names off and then you walk into the toy shops and here's YouTubers with their own soft toys, their plushy wow. figures, and he's going, oh, that's so-and-so, that's so-and-so. No idea what he's talking about. But YouTube covers everything now, and there's <coughs> no reason why these kids can't be on there being stars of the future. For sure, and it's it's such a new thing that all the teachers are like, I don't know how to deal with this. Yeah. And you ask the question, like, you know, who wants to be a YouTuber? Mm -hmm. And literally the whole class. And then you ask a more important one, which was, why do you want to... Ah, uh, yeah. Be a YouTuber, which was quite yeah. interesting. So yeah. Yeah. immediately the hands are shooting up. It's like because I want to be famous. I want or lots of money. I want lots of money. <laughs> so we were like, you know, <laughs> we're, like, oh my we're trying God. to formulate an answer to primary school. Why did I ask this? It's encouraging, but also real. Do you yeah. know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah. So what we were saying is like, you've got to enjoy what you do yeah. before the money. Yeah. Because there's a good chance nobody will follow you if you're just wanting to make money. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you've got to find something you love doing. Be authentic. Make great videos, and then the money will come. Yeah, you know, yeah. and just trying yeah, to yeah. simplify that for them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's but it's hard. crazy. It's crazy how much the lands the landscape's changing in that in that fact. You mm -hmm. know, we were speaking briefly about social yep. media earlier, and, and you know, it's, it's essentially like a social experiment. That's you know, that's my belief on it, and and what we're going through. Yeah. And it's like what we're seeing with Facebook and all these ones. It's like. The radio was a big thing, then TV was a big thing, then YouTube was a big thing, and now it's like social media has got all of those yeah. wrapped up in one. Yeah, one of the things I'd said to you earlier is I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm 38 next month and I'm old enough to remember what it was like to have no smartphone, to have no social media of any sort, mm -hmm. and it was beautiful. It was absolutely <laughs> incredible, and it's only recently I've been, I've been, I've been thinking about this. Um, and I even remember when Friends Reunited came along. I don't know if you even know what, what that yeah, is. I or, remember that vaguely, I think. Yeah, it was the first Facebook, I guess, mm -hmm. before Facebook were Facebook. And it was a Scottish couple that, that created it. But, uh, was it really? It was. Uh, but anyway, I, I, um, it is changed days now. And I remember I was giving a talk in a school fairly recently. And it was actually to first year pupils. And I had made a comment about how when I was their age, there was there was no social media. And this little girl burst out laughing and said, but how did you speak to your friends? I, I, we spoke. Mm -hmm. But what if, they, <laughs> what if they lived down the street? You you walked to their house or you cycled or you yeah. took your well, skateboard you or whatever. <laughs> well, we got to that eventually and they go, but what if they live in the next town? And it's like, well, you you would maybe get on your bike and cycle or you would use the house phone. What's a house phone? Yeah. See that phone halfway up your stairs that no one actually ever touches? Oh, I had that. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to them, do you know when you were out with your friends, when you were a bit older, and you'd be home, let's say, be like nine o'clock or something, um, and uh, you're going to be a wee bit late, you'd have to go into a phone box, reverse the charges, phone your mum, and tell her you're going to be home late. <laughs> and if your mum didn't accept the charges, you knew you were in trouble. Of course, they had no idea what I was talking about. What's a phone box? You know, so. uh, wow. But it's changed days, it is. But no, social media it has its place, and... Um, you have to, you know, people need to embrace it now, and particularly in what you guys do as well, getting, getting your music out there. I, mean, I, lo I love what you guys do, and I'm fascinated. I, whilst, um, you know, dance music, techno music is not the type of music that I tend to listen to, I am fascinated by the industry and have always kind of kept one eye on it. And I've had my trips to Ibiza uh, many, many years ago, 
Um, and I think we spoke about this on our, our Skype yeah, yeah. conversation the time I watched Faithless in a disused quarry in Ibiza. And it's what, truly one of the best things I've ever experienced in my life. And if you guys are able to take even an ounce of that energy and that, mm-hmm. that live experience that gets you right in there to kids, then, then I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Absolutely, you know, it's great. And being able to do what we do uh, motivationally, tying mm-hmm. it in with the music, it's unreal because we're from Dumbarton. Escapade was created off the back of nothing like this yeah. or ever being here. For me growing up, yeah. I was just always on my own. The only DJ in the area I felt, obviously there were some other DJs around, but not really with the kind of grand ideas and stuff. So like for us now, having a collective here, mm-hmm. and for young people to look and see me as an example, like I went to Dumbarton Academy there, um, I would join at a trade, I went down mm-hmm. the trade route because that's what you do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now to be going out there and playing in Amnesia, a super club, taking the team out, building a company, you know, building trust. It's like, it's all, that's inspirational for anyone going to school. Of course. Yeah. And um, that's a big thing that drives us, you know. There's no qualifications, there's no university stuff. It's just hard work. It's just and, and it's taking work. it's taking the yeah. thing that you believe in, and Do and it. taking it to the world. Absolutely. And that's not easy. And it take it can take years and years and years. I mean, you, you you've done this for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. It, it occasionally hear about people's overnight success, but we all know that that isn't literal. So we know rare. that that's behind the scenes. It's years and years and years. Yeah. Um, and it's just taking that thing you love and, and taking it to the world and sharing it. Yeah. And social media has allowed for that. Mm-hmm. So I almost feel it was like, now's the right time. It was meant to happen. Because if this, if we tried to kick off Escapade even 10 years ago, probably wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. Because social media is what's allowed us to expand into a market which is all over the globe. Mm-hmm. It's no longer we town of the Martin trying to sell the music services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's everyone. Yeah. Yep. We've got Skype. We've got things like that. This is like hopefully inspiring for anyone who's trying to start a business or whatever because yeah. the market's the world now. Yeah, and say, so you know, famous for a few, Dan- Daniel Priestley says uh, that in one of his books, it's like, you don't need to be famous to the world these mm-hmm. days. You can have 5,000 people who love your stuff mm-hmm. all over the globe. Yeah. And that's it. That's, there's yeah. your living now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, it's, it's almost like the power's been taken from the big corporates it's always been. Yeah. And it's been more evenly spread out because of the internet. Which is great, I think. You know, it's given more people that chance to go out and create businesses and stuff. You know what I, mean? I think it's it's it's, it's, it's quite it's quite a mad sort of domain that we're in, and you know, for us to conduct what we do is, and as I was saying to you earlier, it's like so much of it is via social media. Mm. So it's just about being able to use it, I think, in a positive manner because mm. it's like you know, it's like Ty Lopez, uh, one of uh, an online mentor that we watch. You know, he you know whether or not we agree with this or not, he, he goes about and like, uh, he'll do like competitions where he'll give people money and stuff like that or he'll, he'll, or he'll, he'll buy someone a car yep. or he'll literally just stop someone in the street and say, you know, there's a grand, you know, go and pay off whatever you've got, this and that and what he'll say is like, look, he, and he'll show you all the negative comments he gets, mm-hmm. people are like, oh, you think you're this, you think you're that and he's like, but see, at the end of the day, what I'm doing is very positive mm-hmm. and I'm actually changing some people's lives by giving them like 10 grand or whatever and I'm not doing it to show off, I'm just like, I'm sick of seeing negative stuff, why not do something positive, but with doing that, you get called this, you're, oh, you're yeah. just trying to show off this and that. But it's again, social media has opened up the gate for people in Scotland to be sitting watching that video. Do you know very what I mean? true. Well, you've probably experienced a bit of that when you go out there and put yourself out on the line. You create companies, you, you really just go for it. With any extreme positive, there's a, an opposite effect. You get people saying this, that and the other. Yeah. It's a natural thing. Failure's okay. You know, you probably have that yourself. Absolutely. And I think it's, um, I think you get to a point where you have to accept that it's okay to fail, as you said. And you know, there's a lot of stuff in education at the moment about helping children to um, to experience failure and to deal with failure because of course we've all been set up to win um, and you know there's things they do in schools now where nobody wins at sports day and you know they need to be allowed to win that stuff as well as, as, as fail but anyway um, oh listen I've made a million mistakes um, I've upset people I've, I've done the wrong thing um, uh, you know there's there's it's how you then come come back from that you know and I think it's, I think in life there's always going to be opportunities, but within every opportunity, something's going to go wrong somewhere. One of the one of the best things I ever heard that didn't make any sense to me at the time was when everything's perfect, when you feel like everything's going really really well, 
something's wrong. And I never, ever knew what that meant. And your face right now tells me you don't know what it means. <laughs> um, it's a really hard one to explain. It's when it, whenever you think, when, it, when, when you think everything's just perfect, something's wrong. Because there will always be something around the corner that's going to smack you in the face. Whether it's somebody, as you say, giving it, giving it that. Mm-hmm. Um, or whether it's just, uh, it could be in business, a client deciding to try a competitor. Mm-hmm. That hurts. Mm-hmm. It really hurts. Yeah. But just make yourself better and win them back, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it could be a member of staff who's been with you for a while, who's just a gem, deciding it's time, it's time to go. That hurts. Mm-hmm. It really hurts. It's not personal, mm-hmm. but it feels personal because it's, it's your business, it's your thing that you've built and spent hours and months and years of your time putting everything you have into it. Um, but again, it's, it's the mindset that you have with that. I was just about to say, so it comes down to just... The awareness and the mindset that it's going to go both ways, Aye. always. Always. There's not like this pot of gold that you're trying to get to, and once you get there, bing. Yeah, no, it's absolutely. It's fantastic now. No. Nothing yeah. else is. No. It's like, it's, so it's really just kind of developing and training a mindset that's used to failure, understanding that, you know, with the extreme positives, there's always something yeah. about smashing. Yeah. And it's yeah. enjoying it though, it's enjoying that process and being in the moment and not always thinking about, oh, but I want this and I want that and I want it to be this. It's so important true. to have those goals and have that vision, but whilst you're going through the experience, enjoy your story, enjoy your adventure. Because, you know, I, I did a, an eight week mindfulness training uh, uh, course uh, last year, and I, one of the big takeaways from that was they, they say that the only time in life you can truly ever enjoy is right now. Yeah. You can remember your story and is. you can look forward to tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But the only moment you can actually truly, truly enjoy is right now. Mm-hmm. And if you're if you're building a business, if you're inspired to follow your dream, whether it's the world of speaking, the world of music, or anything else, even when it feels like it's going wrong, try and try and find that positive. Try and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that this is the moment that will make you better. It will make you. I'm sure I'm quoting a song right now. Uh, this is this is it's like Celine Dion or something. This is. But that's the moment that will actually make you better at, at what you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you'll have done gigs that didn't have many people in the room, oh, or, or, or your equipment's things. broken down, like or, or you made a mistake. Stop, stop uh, doing yeah, sometimes. Totally, you know, totally. And, um, but it becomes part of it. The, the positive thing that I brought myself at, at doing those gigs was like, I looked at it as I was just doing a practice session in my bedroom. Yeah. Where I was like, so the positive was, I'm still playing. So let's say I'm practicing for a bigger set, mm-hmm. and if the, the club's empty or like, you know the pub is empty, that yeah. still practice time. Yeah. 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 I'm still yeah. put, clocking in hours towards my ten thousand or Thick whatever you want to call it. I'm way by that now. I feel, but still, it's all <laughs> you've just got to put the time in. Yeah. And for anyone who wants to learn or train or achieve anything, it's about the hours. Yeah. Regardless whether there's a crowd there, mm-hmm. it's about your own mindset yeah, yeah. and your own kind of determination to get better. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Well, I remember when I first went into the world of speaking. And in fact, before that, work even I was in the uh, the world of stand up comedy for years. You you have that moment where you know, you know in that first few seconds how this is going to go. Mm-hmm. Is if it's going to be just one of those gigs that is just a joy, mm-hmm. and the audience come with you on this amazing journey, or not, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And it's it in in stand up comedy, it's. If it's going wrong, you know you've only got a few minutes. You know, it, you might have twenty minutes, which might feel like hours, but it's it's twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. You might only have five minutes, so on. But in in what I do now, sometimes I speak for two hours, mm-hmm. and they can pay a lot of money for you to come and speak for two hours. And if you know within the first five minutes that it's going to be a toughie, to stand there for two hours mm-hmm. and talk and talk and talk to a tough audience, or if you're not quite hitting the nail on the head. Again, it hurts a lot, mm. but it's in that moment you've just got to be telling yourself, no, no, this is this is practice. This is I'm going to build on this. This is going to take me on to the next one, and uh, it's not always the most enjoyable. See, experience. that's that's that that, <clears throat> that happened to me. My last stand up gig there, you know, where I, to be honest, I just went in quite underprepared, and what had happened was, is like I knew the set. It was only a five minute slot, and when I went there, they basically hadn't booked me on the bill. They'd messed it up somehow. Okay. And they had too many names. So in my mind, I just was like, do you know what? I'm all right with that because I wasn't feeling too comfortable about it tonight. 
and I'm like, I'm just going to stand and watch. I'm cool. And they're like, right, okay, thanks. Really sorry. We'll get you on the next time. I'm like, right, cool. And then 10 minutes into the gig, the guy comes up, right, don't worry. We've got you. We've got you a slot. <laughs> and I was like, no, man, no way. No, please, no. <laughs> so I went up and literally, yeah, the first 20 seconds, I just knew it was going to go terrible. Yeah. You know? And I just knew it. And I was like, uh, I was like swearing like a comma. You know, it was like the F word became a comma. And, and I was just like, my mic was too close and I yeah. just shat it, you know, I just absolutely <laughs> shat it. And uh, and I got the odd laugh here and there. And, and But for me, all I could do, and it's something I kind of always try to live by, is like, you know, I like to sort of like try and zoom out and have a bird's eye view of myself and yeah. be like, well, hold on, you know, we're sp- spinning in space here. There's, there's, yeah. no, there, there's nothing too stressful really about this. This is just sticking it up my skin. Yeah, it's just a stand-up gig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll call it, but you know, but for me, I'm more... Thickening up the skin and yeah. just trying to figure out and say, well, look, going forward, I know what I need to do, and it's helped me in my presentation. Yeah. And it gives you stories to tell. That's what that's what I love about the the the, the days where it goes wrong. It gives you a story to tell yeah. in other talks and other gigs later later on. You know, of course, because then the big ones you can just you know you can talk about those times. You know, yeah. Right, we're going to wrap up for part one at the moment. This has been part one with Gavin Oates. I'm really, really enjoying it right now. We've got a whole load of other stuff coming for part two. So make sure you tune in. And yeah, see you soon. See you all soon.